Thank you for who you created us to be. Thank you for your word that you're about speaking to us this moment. Lord, we cover our hearts with the blood of Jesus. Let your word come out with power and change and transform our lives. Lord, we believe in you that we will not live here the same. Because whoever encounters you must experience an unusual change. Lord, let us see that change in our lives this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. According to the lectionary throughout the Church of Nigeria today, the theme, the poor in our midst is being treated. The poor in our midst is Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7, beginning to read at verse 7. If there is a poor man among your brothers in any of the towns of the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted towards your poor brother. Rather be open-handed and freely lend to him whatever he needs. Go to verse 9. Give verse 10. Give generously to him and do so without a grudging heart. Then because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in everything you put your hand to. Verse 11. There we always be poor people in the land. There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed towards your brothers and towards the poor and needy in your land. Praise the Lord. First of all, I want to appreciate as many who are sponsoring what kind of program or the other in the church. Like the yearly scholarship that, that has been put in place now. There are people who have volunteered themselves that no matter what happens, I know that each year I must give this particular amount so that a poor man in our midst will benefit. And I want to thank those women who we always look around, even among the groups, the Mothers' Union, the Women Guild. They look around, they look at people who are not putting on the appropriate dressing. Not to laugh at them, but when they see the people, they try to know the reason behind it. And the next thing they do is to make sure that the person gets that uniform. I want to assure you that your work is not in vain in the name of Jesus. Each and every cobble you are spending on your neighbor, you will reap it. You will live to reap it in heaven in the name of Jesus. Even before you get to heaven, even in this world, you will reap it. If you believe it, can I hear you say amen? amen. God knows that people, some people in the world, will be poor. Even in the land flowing with milk and honey, God said there will be people, there will always be poor people in that land. Ask me why. Because some people will be born blind. Some will be lame. Some will be deaf. Remember that man. The disciples asked Jesus, say, Jesus, who sinned that this man be born blind? Jesus told him, he said, not the father, not the mother sin, but that the work of God might be made manifest in him. So there are people that will be born blind. There are people who will be crippled. So God made advanced preparation for these people, even in the land flowing with milk and honey. And God said, in this land you are going, I know everything is going to be easy for you, but it's going to be hard for some people. So, as you enter that land, make sure you redistribute the milk and honey in the land. Praise the Lord. We normally say all fingers are not equal. Even in the house of God, it is like that too. 
survival in the world will only be for the strong alone. If we don't redistribute the resources we have in nature. The problem we have in this world is not because the earth is not able to support the humans, the, the, the human beings in the world and the animals in the world. The world is not overpopulated. Nigeria is not over. There is no country in this world that is overpopulated. It's a lie that Nigeria is overpopulated. The world is not overpopulated. The problem we have is selfishness and greed. The ability to redistribute, to distribute the resources provided by nature is our problem. Remember when God created the world, he created man so that man will never die. Just imagine everybody living right from the time of Adam and Eve. That was the original plan of God, of creation. But today, people are living 80 years, 100 years, 120, 30 years, 40. Yet, the resources in the world are not enough for us. Because the weight of the nation, the weight of the world, is in the, is, is in the hands of many wrong people. The weight of the nation, even in Nigeria, yeah, is in the hands of many wrong people. I mean, wrong hands. When you talk about the poor, you may ask yourself, who is a poor man? Who is a poor man? The poor we are referring to here, that God is talking about, is not somebody who has two hands and two legs, who can see, who is able-bodied, but refuse deliberately to walk. The poor man God is talking about here is not somebody who either deliberately or, intent or unintentionally donated his wealth somewhere and is enjoying the wealth driving an airplane. But in the world, in the physical world, he has no bicycle. That is not the poor man we are talking about. The poor man God is talking about here are the lame, are the cripple. They are the people who cannot see. They are the people who are sick. They are refugees. Even the rich who are not able to enjoy their properties because of war. These are the poor God is referring to here. The old people who cannot walk again. The widows, the orphans who nature have displaced. I want to let you know that the world is very hard for so many people today. The problem we have in this worry is that the, the rich is less than 0.5% of the total population in this worry. So what the people are doing, they are just struggling to measure up. Everybody wants to be like the rich. The weight is in the hands of very few people. And unfortunately, unfortunately, many of them are misusing the words. Many of them are abusing the words. Many of them, when they see a beggar on the way, they see them as debts that are supposed to be swept away. Praise the Lord. In the early church, the Bible made us to understand that there was no needy person in the church because people were willing to give. And because of that, the church was growing at an alarming rate. The church was growing. And in Romans chapter 12, verse 13, the Bible made us to understand that we should share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. How many of us are doing this today? The fact that you have work, you can work, doesn't mean you achieve the position you are today by your own strength. If go and ask midwives, people who have experience, people who have delivered women in labor, they will tell you that even there are children they give birth to, and in the children 
on the bodies of the children, you see robes. They use in tying the children. I have heard stories. I have seen people talking about this. Sometimes they will tie the leg to the neck. But God in his infinite mercy, despite the fight in the womb, he allowed you to come out alive and well. How powerful were you when you were in your mother's womb? When you were just six months, five months, two days, how powerful were you? If the enemy could, can enter a woman's womb and tie the baby, how possible would it have been to remove one leg or remove one hand or remove the two eyes? So the baby in the womb is not 100% secure. But because of God, by the mercies of God, we came out well. Today we are able to walk. Today we are able to make money. That is why the Bible says, it is God who gives you the power to make wealth. If you are not in a position like that, why can't you make somebody who is in that kind of position? Somebody who is crawling on the ground but has no wheelchair. When we come to church like this, you ask your brother how he's on, they tell you everything is fine. It's a lie. Everything is not fine. If you continue to ask them, why is your mood like this? If everything is fine, why didn't you come to church? Yes, last week. If you ask them with love, they will open up to you. And you will know that everything at home is not fine. I want to let you know there are people who choose to die with their problems because of past experiences. Don't wait for them to beg you first. Don't wait for people to beg you first. Because some people have faced so much embarrassment in, time, in terms of begging. In trying to make a living some time in the past. And they don't want history to repeat itself again. Because of that, even when you ask them, are you fine? They tell you, I am fine. Why are you putting on only this dress? They tell you, I just like it. It's a lie. You don't know what it means to see people putting offering and you have nothing. You have nothing. Even you trek to church. But I tell you, it's a good thing to see people smiling and it's a better thing to know that you are the reason behind their smile. You know the dream I had one day? I had a dream on the 10th of March this year. In the dream, a venerable and a reverend had a petrol station. This petrol station, the venerable knew he was about to die, so he wrote a will and will his path to a widow. In the dream, I saw another scene, another place. The venerable was counting money. The venerable was just counting money. Money was coming and the venerable was counting money after his death. So, the reverend died after some time and he met the venerable. He said, venerable, this is the sense of today. I can, I can, as I'm seeing this money, I know this is the money we said today. The venerable told him, he said, look, from the day I went my path to this widow, from that very day, even your path, plus my, the path I went to the widow, had been coming to me. As you see me here, this is how I count money every day. Praise the Lord. We have 80, 120 years to live. And in these years, we prepare for eternity. I mean, one million times, one zillion times, zillion and zillions of years without ending. There is difference between salvation and reward. There is a huge difference. Some people in this world, they are only fighting for salvation. They are not fighting for reward. They only have their salvation and they are okay with it. Daniel chapter 12 verse 3. He said, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Those who are wise, open your Bible and underline that word, wise. In this world, you make money. 
you make money. But you don't invest in heavenly things. But the wise one, they know that they came naked. Like what Job said. He said, naked have I come. And naked I will go back. The wise ones, at every point in time, they sent something home. Just like some of us here. Who are not so wise. When we leave this world, we have no home in our village. Our car, if possible, we will have a place, the mud house of our grandfather. We park the car there. But we are living as big men here. When you arrive, they said, yes, he has arrived. The way you can send something home is by providing for the poor. Providing for the poor. Let me tell you another experience. After that dream, one day I was just sitting here in my usual seat and I was just thinking. I said, if at all, salvation is not enough. That what you give, the work you do, is what you will reap in heaven. Why not I just create a little percentage of my salary? As I pay my tithe every month, I will just say, you beggar, take this. I'll pick up my Bible. I was trying to do some mathematics. I forgot. Another thing came up. I closed the book. After some days, I had a dream. I was still saying the same thing. He said, I said, I was trying to make the plan of investment, but I failed. Why? Why have, not, have I not made my plan to invest? My mind was just on the percentage. I said, I have not worked the percentage out. When I woke up, I tried to do it. I failed again. Again, I had the same dream. You can resolve today. There is no way you lead people to Christ and God will allow your hearts to be empty in heaven. You will get there. You will get there. You will get there. Heaven, you will get there. But what I am saying, before you get there, prepare something ahead. Prepare something. We heard that Yakubu, who had been to heaven, he told us beautiful stories about heaven. But when he ended, he said some people are living in a hall because they never worked for God. Even children who were aborted, they had salvation, but they had no reward because they never lived their life to work for Christ. So they are living in a very beautiful garden. If you go just a few steps from here, you will see a hotel there, Brotel, where sex workers live day and night. Take your Bible, quote the whole scriptures. Only one word they will tell you. They will tell you if I leave this job. Will you give me a job? People are selling their soul. People are getting frustrated day and night and giving up in life. Because there is no help. There is no help. We preach the word of God, but many times we don't back it up with giving. If you must be a good preacher in this end time, if you must be a good preacher of the word of God, you must back it up with giving. Far gone are the days when you just go, you say, Jesus loves you. Just give your life to Christ. Everything will be okay. And the person will say, yes, let me try this God. Far gone are those days. Today, people want to, when they look at your dressing, they said, something good will fall out of this man. If I tell him I have not eaten, I don't have clothes, he will do something. But when you fail to do something, they said, he's talking about love. But he can't even show a little jot of the love he is preaching. There was a woman who repented in all saints' church in Ole. This woman was an Igbe woman. But when she gave her testimony, the day she repented, she said when she was sick, the Igbe people abandoned her. But some people, some Christians were always bringing food to her. So the day she got well, she was putting on bedroom slippers. She came to church. If you look at her dressing alone, you will say, this person is the poor we are talking about. She said, where the food was coming from, I am going them now. She must have heard people preaching about Christ, but she never gave her life to Christ. 
But when her need was met, she had no option to give her life to Christ. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you that asthma is at hand. Before you plan so big, remember the poor. Boys and girls, before you buy knockout and start shooting back, 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 remember the poor. Remember that somebody is looking for 20 naira to buy ice fish. Some people, they spent 20,000 naira in shooting knockouts. Meanwhile, some people are just saying, ah, if I can just get this 20 naira, I will be okay. How are you living? I tell you that your work will not be in vain. So, into the lives of the poor. If you see yourself as a poor man, you will not be able to give. But if you cannot give five naira from the one thousand you have today, even if God bless you, you will not be able to give one thousand naira from one million. So, giving is a lifestyle. Let us rise up. Before you leave this world, you must make sure you provide a wheelchair for somebody. You must make sure you provide a hearing aid for somebody. You must provide crutches for somebody. You must provide employment for somebody. You must provide clothing for somebody. Just close your eyes and tell God something this moment. Just tell God something about the word you have heard. Just tell God something that God, even the little I have now, I want to be given. I want to be given to your people. I want to give. I want to give. Even as I spare the blessings, I want to give. I want to be a giver. I am not a beggar. I am a giver. Even from the little I am having now, I want to be giving. In Jesus' name, we pray. Even this moment, Lord, we pray that you will change us. From this moment, we will have a percentage, even from the little we have, monthly, daily, yearly, that we will give to the poor. We want to draw people close to you. Lord, help us to preach even with giving. Lord, we want to live fulfilled lives. We don't just want to live successful lives in this world. But we want our soul to find fulfillment in our living. We want to live in the lives of others even when we are gone. Lord, help us this day. Let no devil take this word from our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.